What is up everyone? It's Kayla from Kayla the Video Maker 2 and this video we are going to introduce using functions in C. I've talked about this a little bit and I mentioned a little bit about what functions are and how to use them but I wanted a video just to introduce a little bit more detail so that way as we use functions you're not like what what the heck is he doing? So that way you have a better idea of what's going on when we start typing out more code and everything. <sighs> As we move on in this series, we are going to start moving more systematically through concepts in C, rather than what we've done in the last five or six videos where we just kind of give an overview of a bunch of things. That's because we need to go in more detail in order to understand everything we need to know. Specifically, farther in the future, we are going to talk about functions in depth. So don't feel like you have to know everything from this video, and if I've already told you basically everything already that I talk about in this video, that's okay. I just wanna centralize it in one video so you can have it for your use. So, with that being said, let's begin. What is a function? A function can be used to call or execute multiple statements at one time. Now, the computer actually does go through each statement one at a time, but for us as programmers, we only have to say one thing. So for example, if we are trying to print three things to the console, our code might look something like this. Now technically you wouldn't have to have three printf statements, because you can always break things down to the new line using backslash n. But sometimes for readability, it's easier to break things up into multiple printf statements. That way we don't just have like this huge never ending string with like a ton of text and a bunch of backslash ends. It's harder to consume this with our eyes than smaller printf statements. In addition to this, we've also created code that is going to monitor some kind of information. And we want to continually print out the same statements with new updated information. So we might have some kind of sensor that this will print like temperatures or something like that. It doesn't really matter what we're using this for. <laughs> Just make up something in your head. Essentially, we want to execute all three of these numerous times. Well, with a function, we could basically group all three of these together into one. Don't look at me all innocent. You just ruined my video, boy. I don't even know what I was saying. <laughs> Anyways, you could execute all three of these at one time and give it some kind of name, like console dump. We're just dumping all the information straight to the console. And then we can just call that using these parentheses. That is essentially what a function is. It's a shorthand to calling a bunch of statements. So this here, this printf statement, this is actually a function itself. You can see we're calling it with these parentheses and we're passing in information inside of these parentheses of what we want to print. The actual code for the printf statement, we don't need to care about that. All we need to know is how to use that function. Who knows how many lines of code that function actually takes up? It doesn't really matter to us, to be honest. All we need to know is that when we call this function and pass in some information, it goes to the console. That's all we care about. The second benefit of functions is that if you wanted to change something, like let's say we have this code in our program 10 times and we're not using a function and then we want to go back and change something we're gonna to have to change it in 10 different locations <laughs> that's not gonna work very well if we're using functions we can kind of think about it as extracting this code as a formula and then we only have one copy so this is our individual copy and then we can call it multiple times so now we have two calls and we could repeat this as many times as we wanted the data that we actually pass into a function inside of these parentheses, these are known as arguments. Functions can accept as many arguments as they want. The only thing is you have to separate multiple arguments by commas. So for example, in this printf function, we could do something like this, where x is the name of a variable that stores some value. The action of putting data here is called passing. So if you had to put it into a sentence, you would say we are passing two arguments. The arguments in this case, the first one would be this string here, the second one would be x, and they're separated by a comma. Arguments allow us to customize our functions. For example, in this situation where we had this function we created called console dump or whatever, we could accept arguments 
that allow us to change how the function works. You can see that in the printf function. The printf function does something different depending upon what we pass in. If we're passing in x here and it has the value of 5, it's going to print 5 to the console. But if x has the value of 6, it's going to print 6. So if you need another way to think about this, you can think of functions kind of as cookie cutters, right? So let's say we have this cookie cutter in the shape of a carrot. This could be our function. A cookie cutter only gives you most of what you need. As for the actual color and the material, material, you're probably gonna use this for eating, so I don't know if material would be the best word, but substance, all of that stuff depends on you. You get to choose that kind of stuff. You can think of that kind of stuff as the arguments. You know, you could easily fill this up with peanut butter and then make a carrot shaped peanut butter cookie. <laughs> <laughs> or you could fill it up with chocolate chip cookies. The end result, it looks like a carrot, but each carrot is slightly different. This one could be, you know, chocolate, and this one could be peanut butter. If you had to convert this into computer science terms, it would look something like this. Make carrot cookie, and then we could pass in here like a string, for example, chocolate. Where this function is defined, that's what we'll get into farther in the series when we talk about creating our own functions. But essentially, if you go track down where this function is created, you'll find something called a parameter that describes what you're passing in here. So we would say something like flavor, I guess. <laughs> so flavor is going to be a variable, and the value of flavor is going to be chocolate. That is your rundown of functions in programming. They're super helpful because one, they make it less easy to make mistakes because you don't have duplicate code everywhere. Two, it makes your code easier to read because all we have to do is say a name, make carrot cookie, super clear. And three, it makes the main section of our code much smaller. For example, if you had an app that makes cookies and sells cookies, you could just have another function in here. And this might all be inside a main. And you can see that all of our code really looks like there's only two lines. <laughs> That's pretty easy. It's nice and readable, nice and easy to maintain. It's awesome. So that is why functions are so great and I hope you guys understand the beauty of them and enjoy them, if that's even possible. It is possible to enjoy carrot-shaped chocolate cookies. <laughs> so yeah guys, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Woo!